Countdown. This is episode 182. It's the 24th of February 2017 and I'm glad you're here. My name is Emily. If you are brand new, hello and welcome. And if you're coming back, I'm so glad you're back. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Chain of Fools and on Instagram as, what am I there, Fibertown with an RE. I'm really not anywhere else on social media. In fact, I've kind of given up on Facebook. Not that I was ever anything more than a sort of a friends and family presence there, but I don't like it anymore. That is neither here nor there. I'm glad that we're here to chat about woolly stuff. Alice wanted to say hello. Can you say hi? This is Al. And she's doing pretty well. You know, your foot is on my kitchen table now, and that's, that's not too... At any rate, we wanted to say hi. I'm going to put her down now. So I have woolly things to talk about. I have a prize to award for the Handspun Winter. In fact, let's just do that right now. Handspun Winter is rolling along, and even though it does not feel like it, it's winter here today, it's, uh, it's about 75 for the high. We're, we're not there yet, but this, this sweater is going to have to come off pretty soon. Um, at any rate, so I asked random who is the winner, and the winner was number 191, who is Emily Ruth B. Emily! She has a podcast, Goldberry Artisans. I enjoy watching her. She's a young woman uh, who lives in Maine and talks about, you know, uh, the process of becoming a more advanced knitter and knitting on a budget, and she's got an interesting show, and you guys should check it out. Goldberry Artisans. And she won the prize. So excellent. She's got a really pretty color work hat in there. Uh, and you guys should enter too because you could win a prize. Let me tell you what Emily won and what you guys, I'm sure you've heard all about this prize. This is from the new mama, Mina Phillip. Congratulations, Mina, if you're watching this. I don't know that you, that you do. But she so, so generously offered... Um, a copy of her new sock collection to give away. I'm very excited for this. So she, let's see, let me, let me give you the basic rundown. This is a $15 value and she's got a group or a thread in her group with um, details about knit-alongs. At any rate, she, um, it's a sock pattern club, I think for three months. Sorry, I don't have the details here. Ah. It's called the New York Sock Club, the New York Sock Collection, and it is a club. Each month you get an automatic download from Ravelry for a new pattern. And she's used a lot of indie dyed yarns in this, um, so it should be a very interesting thing. And you also get her basic vanilla sock pattern, as well as a heel that she likes to use. So, beautiful. Thank you, Mina. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. It looks like a lot of fun, and it's nice to anticipate a new pattern. Um, every month. Excellent. So, Emily, when you hear this, let me know and I will have Mina send you a copy of the club. Very nice. Okay, so Handspun Winter. I'm wearing a Handspun sweater today. Um, this is my, I think I wore an Enchanted Mesa last time I podcasted. This is my second Enchanted Mesa. And this is like a dotted rain shawl turned into a sweater. How just spectacular are these colors. Um, I think they're spectacular. These are exclusively hobbledehoy and gourmet stash hand spuns. And I did my, um, my modification where I didn't do um, the dropped sleeve and I left off the cowl neck. And yeah, most of these are spindle spun as well. And they're merinos and cashmeres and yaks and sari silk and sparkle and lovely memories spun into this sweater and knit. So I put on some nice pink lipstick to go with it. All right, so that's my hat spun winter. I may have to pause this and put on something else because it's pretty hot. So let's talk about, let's talk about FOs. I have some, they are not hand spun, but let me show you anyway. These are the gauntlets, the mitts, the sleeves, whatever you like to call them. I like to knit them and I love to wear them. So I've knit another pair. This is out of mustache yarn. Nope, sorry, I can't come up. This is out of mustache yarn um, in the sorting hat. Really loved knitting it. I was gonna make socks and then I just, I couldn't 
I just love Harry Potter. Um, I truly do. And so I wanted these on my hands, on my arms. Hey, 64 stitches. I did a little increase at one point, but probably didn't need to. Um, it's one of those, making it up as I go along, and then I, I thought I'd need to increase, and so I did, and then I got a little farther and decided not to increase anymore. But anyway, this is the second pair of, second FO rather. And these are the Mercury socks. Um, I staggered the lace on the foot a wee bit, and that was because of a mistake. I stopped doing the lace um, on one of the repeats. You can see it better on my Instagram. I put a picture of the top of the sock. It's sort of a waterfall effect of where the lace repeats end and begin. Anyway, kind of short socks, fun socks to knit. It's a merino nylon. It's kaleidoscope yarns. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kaleidoscope yarns in Aphrodite's Tears, and it's a gorgeous speckle gray base with like chartreuse, rose, purple speckles. Yeah. So, uh, anything else I wanted to say? No, I've already worn them. Um, so yeah, it was nice to get some things done and off the needles. And the reason that I have those FOs and progress on some of my whips, uh, the reason is that I was down with the flu, like the, bo the bona fide flu. Uh, I'll talk more about, you know, what that meant for my knitting life, um, other than finishing things. Um, for a while, I could not even knit. So, and if if you hear that in my voice, the the remains of the virus, I'm still kind of still getting over it, but I'm mostly better. Yes, I see your face down here. Do you want to come back up? Well, you can't because I'm showing things that I've cast on. Works in progress. And let me show you the first one, which is a new cast on. No, don't don't scratch. And this is hopefully going to be part of Handspun Winter. And I've got a fat squirrel bag. Inside the fat squirrel bag, oh, let me just arrange all these lovelies because they're gorgeous. So you can see them. So I have four Shetland yarns in here. There's a black in the corner as well. So I cast on the Camaro sweater and then I cast it on five more times. You know, you ever get one of those projects where the cast on just never seems to work? You, it's a long tail and you estimate your, your tail and it's not enough, so you rip it out. And then uh, you overestimate your long tail, um, so you have a giant tail left over when you have the right amount of stitches cast on and you, you think to yourself, I can't waste this yarn, so I'm going to knit with this long tail and I bet I'll get all the way around back to the beginning stitch and then I can start using the the working yarn. And then you don't make, you make it five stitches from the end and there's no way. And then you have to take that cast on out and then something else happens and something else ha Anyway, yes, this was one of those cast ons. And I finally got it successfully cast on, but I'm gonna have to rip because I am. So the Camaro, is a pattern that's newly released. It's caught my eye. It's by Tannis Lavallee. And it has, it's a sort of a, I guess it's, oh, I should show a picture, shouldn't I? No, go look it up, Camaro by Tannis. And I guess it's not really a V-neck. It's a kind of a wider neck, but it has stripes and they come to a bit of a point. They do come to a point <laughs> in the front. Um, yeah, and I've just, there are lots of ways to stripe this up, and I'm just very excited to, um, to put my Shetland from Ross Farm to use. So let me see if I can tell you, this is, this black Shetland is Demetria. She is the softest of the four Shetlands in here. She's gorgeous. I think she's very sought after. In fact, I think I was lucky to get this one. Here she is, Demetria. Uh, it's a bit of a heather. It's, these are all sport weights. Two of them are two plies and two of them are three plies. So yeah, Demetria, oh, just gorgeous. And then we have Cassie, which is a Shetland lamb. That's the other two ply. And then we have, um, this is Shayla. 
I don't remember her name. Ross Farm, the Ross Farm. If you if you haven't looked at them, their website yet, or been to a festival and bought from them, check them out. Their ball bands have pictures of the actual animal that provided the wool. Can't remember who this is from, but this is sort of a Moret colorway. So I'm very excited to have these Shetland colored stripes, and then I might use my Eloise fleecewise yarn for the body. We will see. Um, I plan to do a, a longer hem and a split hem, so kind of making this my own. And I want to do sort of Missoni inspired stripes, so lots of different striping, random patterns. Uh, but the reason I need to rip back, I did forget some increases. But the other reason I want to rip back is because I forgot to uh, slip the first stitch when I've changed colors to avoid, to do a jogless stripe. So, <coughs> excuse me, I will probably just rip back to the end of this gray. But, um, yeah, so I have, I have another sweater going. Um, should I be so lucky to go to Rhinebeck? This would be a fun Rhinebeck sweater. And the other sweater I'm going to show you would definitely be a perfect Rhinebeck sweater. And that's my Lovage sweater. And completely inspired by the one I saw on the Fruity Knitting podcast. So when I was able to knit, I was literally in bed for five days with a fever. The flu was, I got the flu diagnosed. Um, my son had had it first, and then my husband and I both got it. We were so sick at the same time. I don't recommend that. Um, <coughs> so once I was finally able to summon enough energy to knit, I, I took out my Lovage sweater. I've talked about the yarns in here before, um, and I, yeah, I'll talk about them again, probably not today. But they suffice, it, suffice it to say they're all woolly wools. And I finished the main color work. Do you see that sort of broken Norwegian star? Let me hold it. Right, see it? Right there. Really gorgeous. So from last week, I've, I knit from here to here. So <coughs> you can absolutely see uh, how my color work has improved. It's really good down here. I'm very, very proud of the suppleness of this fabric from about halfway through the green to the bottom. Uh, yeah, and I've made this this particular green right here. I've made it work. It's it's a three ply, not a two ply. Two plies really look nice in color work. They lie flatter, but I think this one looks okay now that my tension is better. It's also a shinier yarn. It's a Romney instead of a Shetland. Um, another, a couple other shiny yarns I have in here are the Cornish Tin. The teal and the orange are both Cornish Tin too, and I love those. They're a really interesting mixture of long wool and short wool, and long wool, yeah, and fine wool qualities. Um, like, really interesting mixture of shine, a Shetland feel, wool and spun-ish. Although I don't know if I could say if it's a wool and spun yarn. I don't know. But it has, it reminds me more of a wool and spun than a worsted. And that's Cornish Tin too by Blacker. So I have started the beige slog. <laughs> and that is with this gorgeous stuff. Another Blacker yarns, Manx with mohair. Um, the hand of this is completely different knit up. It's, it's lovely, lovely stuff. So there is a bit more color work to do on the sleeves. Basically, I have a, a repeat of this whole Norwegian star motif to do on the sleeves. And it's just so colorful. So I have tried it on. I went rogue on the construction on this. Um, it's knit bottom up in the pattern. I went top down, reverse engineered everything. And so far, so good. I, I have tried it on and because of my gauge did not meet the gauge of the pattern, and there was no way it was ever going to meet the gauge of the pattern um, and be a pleasant fabric at all, um, I decided to go top down so that I'd have more control. And because I chose the small size small, uh, 
with my gauge. And I was trying it on as I went pretty frequently. Um, the only place that it became risky was over the bust. Um, and you'll see this is the Lovage by Marie Wallen and it's got a lot of positive ease. My Lovage won't have a lot of positive ease, but it fits lovely, it really does. So now I'm doing my own thing. I've decided on a rate of increase and I'm just doing four increases on the sides every five rounds. And uh, just, yeah, because I'm really, I'm below my belly button at this point. So hip increases need to happen. And uh, yeah, should be lovely. But it is a little less fun to knit now that it's just massive amounts of um, beige stock in it. Really love it. I'm using US Zing, uh, US Zings, Knit Pro Zings, US Fives. These are from the Wooly Thistle. So yeah, really enjoying that sweater. You want to come back. Don't lick me. Okay. Um, oh goodness, why is my Kindle here? This is how I distinguish my Kindle from my husband's. A Ravelry sticker. So, oh, I do have a, <coughs> a third project, and it's more sorting hat yarn. And these are socks. I am knitting Rose City Rollers because the pair I have, I, I wear a lot, and I really like them. There they are. Roll brim. I'll knit about an inch of stockinette and um, then start my whole heel process. <coughs> Spinning and dyeing. Well, let me tell you about dyeing. In my last episode, I left you with um, an avocado dye on some hand spun. Okay, you can come. Come here. Come here. Um, that it kind of gone wrong it, and I tried again and I'm not quite sure what to tell you. So the story of this, you can come but I can't, come here. The story of this is that I have a pound, about 1800 yards of a three ply hand spun Ramboulet from Rockland's Farm. Blinding white. I do not want to knit a white sweater. Okay, here she is. Let's talk. Let's tell the story of this dye saga, shall we? I don't want to knit a, night night, a white sweater. So I went to Whole Foods and asked the produce guy for the pits from avocado production. Avocado. Avocado pits from guacamole production. And he gave me a lot, and I made a first dye attempt. So what I had done with those pits was I... Um, I hammered them open, so they were just halved. And I made a, a dye bath, a tea, with the avocado pits, and it looked great. It looked nice and red. And if, if it's well done, an avocado dye bath gives um, sort of a ballet pink to the finished product. Or if it's super strong, you, I guess you can get more of a red tone. My first attempt was beige. And... I was disheartened because I had cooked, I had now cooked my yarn and that I think changed the character of it. Um, the Rambouillet was just lovely soft. Um, it seemed a bit on, you know, an interesting mixture between tough and fragile. And fragile in that it's a fine wool uh, with all of the pilling qualities that you're going to have with a fine wool, even though I had tried to minimize that by doing a traditional three ply to trap, you know, to cover as much of the single surface as I could um, so that I would minimize pilling. All right, you're not happy here. Are you going to stay or not? So, uh, yeah, I was not happy with the dye bath. And I had showed on the podcast, I had asked for tips, I believe. And two, <coughs> two viewers in particular, Infric, and another one I cannot recall right now, I've done, they both gave me excellent recommendations. Um, 
and I followed those. And here were the recommendations. Oh, and Sarah Pomegranate also gave me more tips. Sarah Pomegranate said, chop up the pits more so you get more, um, you'll get more tannins, you'll get more of the color out of the pits. I was hesitant to do that because it seemed like a lot of work. It wasn't hard though. Um, you know, once I had halved the pits and I started with a fresh batch, I had a lot of pits. <laughs> and I had done sort of a two, two pounds to one pound, two pounds pits to one pound fiber. That was my ratio. I probably, I did a little bit more this time around and luckily I have enough pits and I still have enough for another go around if I need to. Um, so I chopped them up. Once I had halved them, I put them flat side down, chop, chop, chop. Uh, the other thing I did was I did not, I didn't go above a certain temperature. I didn't go above, I didn't get to a simmer. I heated the dye bath, I heated the yarn when it was in it, but I didn't let it simmer. That, I mean, that one for one, that's a little, you know, you don't want to filter your yarn. Um, and then something I found on the internet said, that's a guarantee of beige when you're doing an avocado dye bath. I'm sorry, you're going. Then the other thing I did that I think made the most difference was that I put washing soda into the dye, the dye bath. And I made washing soda by baking baking soda. That's a thing. I'm not sure of the chemistry behind it, but I think it makes the dye bath more alkaline. Yes, that seems right. Um, which it also gives you um, a better color. I will say that I have this way of something I've developed. I think it's <laughs> as I've gotten older, I have this way of suspending disappointment. It's very curious. It's not something that I've consciously done, but I've noticed it about myself. Um, something doesn't turn out the way, for one, I don't have rigid expectations for one thing. And this whole suspension of disappointment is maybe a growth out of that. <laughs> Let me show you what I got. <coughs> the color is much more what I was going for. It's not beige. But I found myself asking this question. Why did I think I'd look good in a flesh-colored sweater? Yeah. And I think the suspension of disappointment has to do with, I'll let it marinate. See how I rationalize things. See if I come up with another solution. But I think I'm done with avocado on this particular spin. Hmm. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I'm just not going to dwell on it. Moving along to other spinning. I think that was that was a whole palaver to tell you about that. Goodness. All right, folks, I have a black Welsh mountain spin. This is from Feederbrook Farms. I have been spinning down my fiber stash. I have very little fiber left that's not in fleece form. I have plenty of that. <laughs> but as far as dyed fiber, I'm really, I've really been working, you know, it's hard, so hard to show this. This is a chunky three ply, 400, um, Four ounces, 110 yards, true, chunky. Now I went, as I said, this is from Feederbrook Farm, Black Welsh Mountain, which is supposed to be one of the only true black yarns out there, or black wools. This really isn't quite like what the Fleece and Fiber source book says. Number one, the Fleece and Fiber source book says it's a true black except some, sometimes for the tips. And maybe that's what I'm seeing in this yarn was the tips blended in, giving a brownish, reddish cast to it. 
it also said that um, the Black Welsh Mountain is a sheep that doesn't go gray as it ages, unlike this sheep, which is going wonderfully gray, um, and that it doesn't have much kemp. So I have gray in here, and I have kemp. In fact, I wonder if you can see that. Yeah, that's kemp. It's brittle, it's breakable. Um, so I do wonder about the provenance of this particular Black Welsh Mountain. Doesn't quite fit what Deb Robeson, bow down, what Deb Robeson says about it. Anyway, that has a nice crisp hand. It's um, a medium, medium micron count, 27, 28, a little bit up from there. Now I spun another long wool, and this is a Highland Handmaid's Club colorway. I can't remember the name of the colorway, but this is Wensleydale, you guys. I really love how this came out. Um, I ha these two have not been finished. These two yarns I've just shown you, these are just ties right here. This, gosh, not a whole lot of yardage, maybe 150. I don't have the tag with me. But I always worry when I spin long wools because I don't think I'm very good at it. Um, the preferred drafting method is not my preferred spinning method, so I always feel like, am I doing this right? Um, what I did is set up my wheel on the largest whorl. I treadled slowly, and I worked close to the orifice. I did sort of a short backward draw. And... <coughs> Excuse me. So Wensleydale is a long wool. It's one of those just gorgeous long locks. British breed and shiny. And I kept it, so I kept it low twist because the longer wools don't require as much twist to hold together. And if you put too much twist in there, you end up with a super ropey, dense yarn. Um, and I kept the ply twist very low as well. And I just really enjoy how it came out. I think it'll make a, a gorgeous woven something. So that was fun. Fun and fast. Not as fast as my, my typical um, long draw, but fun and fast. The, oh, and then fiber prep. I, you know, I've been spinning down a lot of my fiber, but I have a lot of fleece. So since Maryland Sheep and Wool is coming up, yay, in just a few months, need to make fleece room. So I've taken this guy here from last year's Sheep and Wool and it's a Coopworth cross with something else I cannot recall right now. Um, and I've started doing some more carding, just paying attention to this particular fleece. And I've got a bunch of flat bats here. And there they are. Two passes through my brother drum carter, and uh, feels like about half a pound ish, maybe. Um, so that's it for spinning and so forth. Yeah, I have fiber camp. I had knit camp at my house, and I, we sadly, sadly had to cut it a day short. And it was a great group, and I hope that we can make that day up at some point. Um, it was lovely. It was really great. They were amazing knitters. Um, this is probably my easiest group to teach ever. Um, but as I said, my husband and I both got super sick, and there was no way we could we could make it work. So the dye day was really fun. Um, they made beautiful, beautiful dyes. I posted them on Instagram. They, everyone finished their hat. I believe Sam, I hope he finished it. He was almost done last time on that last day. On the last day, they got together at school and knit together and helped each other finish. So, so yeah, I think pretty much everyone finished their hat. Everyone had learned how, I don't know about Sam, because he was absent one of the days too, so I wasn't able to finish with him. Um, but everyone else who was there the whole time 
learned how to cast on, they learned how to purl, and they started making a present cowl out of their newly dyed yarns. And that's a free pattern on Ravelry. I think it's a great second pattern for, you know, once you've learned how the knit stitch, learn how to cast on and purl. Um, and they have plans. They, um, a couple of them went together to a yarn store um, because we weren't able to and did some shopping there and it's very fun. So yeah, they were a great, great group. And one thing we did this, this year that we hadn't done was um, eco printing. And I did a scarf as well. And I really love how it came out. Let me show you, can you see, oh yeah, you can. Can you see this right here? See the stem, see the leaves, that's eucalyptus. Uh, we've got lots of red onion skin. We have lots of marigold petals. We have a chrysanthemum. Here's my chrysanthemum. Do you guys see it? Right there. Oh, gorgeous. I tried some lichens from a walk. I did nothing. Um, but yeah, here's some more eucalyptus. Really, really pretty. Really gorgeous. It's so much fun. It's like opening a present when you unwrap these. So um, we did carnations too, because they were. It was Valentine's Day when we did dyeing. We bought, a, you know, some bits and pieces from the florist. So I think you guys. I think that's all I've got today. Um, let me just double check. Thanks everybody for you know getting in touch. Um, I really love hearing from you guys in the episode thread. I love hearing from you guys on YouTube um, and uh, enjoyed hearing your responses to my sharing of that dig I did many, many years ago in France. So, <coughs> excuse me. I wanted to see, I wonder if you all have heard of a podcast that I wanted to mention. It's called Wool Academy with Elizabeth Van Delden. And she has people in the wool industry, so um, a Scottish weaver, Malcolm somebody, who, was, who spoke recently on her podcast about color, and it was really fascinating. Um, so, yeah, just something you might want to check out if you haven't already. Um, some interesting stuff from a different perspective that hand knitters may not know about. All right, so I think that's it for now. Keep posting Enhanced by Winter. There will be more prizes. Um, and all the best to you all. Take care till next time.